Hello, hello everyone, and uh, uh, this is Ambassador Omari uh, coming to you. Uh, uh, very, very glad uh, to reconnect with you one more time. And uh, as always, uh, this is the channel to subscribe to. This is the channel to follow. This is where to be uh, for more uh, exciting, form for more educative, uh, inspiring content. This is the place to be. And as always, uh, for those who have already supported in subscribing, in liking, in following, in uh, uh, watching the videos that we've already uploaded, we want to promise you that uh, this is only by the start. We are, we, we are just starting. So uh, keep on uh, following us for more content. And today, we um, personally, I'm very excited to meet a friend I've really I've known for a couple of years. Um, now, and someone that I've known to be very, uh, very hard working, someone that has worked in several uh, levels before, and is going to tell us, uh, today has granted us a few minutes just to have a chat, and uh, he's just seated right in front of me. This is Ambassador Mari, and with me is my brother, the, because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, Mr. Anthony Kibagendi. Uh, yes, I'm the Secretary for Youth Affairs in the Office of the Deputy President. Uh, uh, that is one of uh, the jobs that I do, but uh, on the side I also, I'm also an entrepreneur. I run a car leasing business and of course I also run a, a security farm that I've been running for quite some years. So I'm extremely delighted to be invited to this uh, show to share with you and of course the viewers uh, on uh, matters that I believe will help transform our country and our society. Thank you. Thank you so much for that brief introduction. And uh, we cannot really get away from that uh, until you tell us exactly uh, who is this Anthony? Where was he born? Is he a Kenyan or <laughs> you just arrived? <laughs> Okay, like briefly said, about your, just the background, uh, you were born, um, uh, school, Anthony Kibagendi, um, uh, I, I, I come from Kisi County. Like I said, I'm currently working in the office of the Deputy President as an advisor for Youth Affairs. Uh, in government it is called Secretary. Uh, those are, that is the level that uh, people get the advisory role. Uh, I went to school St. Mary's Musocho uh, in Kisi County. Later I went to Maseno School and then Maseno University, and uh, uh, like I said, um, in the, in, in the mm -hmm. hustling <laughs> world, I run, uh, I've, been doing, I've been in business since I graduated from school, business and politics, uh, I've been balancing between the two, and of course family, I'm married, and I've, I have kids of course, and uh, beyond that, I'm a community mobilizer, I'm, I support community on a matter of things, uh, that of course, uh, the, that kind of engagement is what has given me leverage in uh, the political field. Uh, I got appointed to government in the year 2018, July, mm -hmm. uh, to come and give uh, support to government on uh, how we can transform uh, the youth uh, segment of the population. Uh, and uh, that is what I'm doing right now, although, again, we got into government at an extremely turbulent season where uh, I believe most of us understand the, politico the politics of the day where there is a bit of uh, disharmony between especially the two principles, which uh, mm -hmm. has greatly Yeah, we have a lot to talk about that uh, and uh, you'll expound more. Thank you. You'll the, the, the job that we are doing. Let me cut you short kindly. Yeah. You'll... Uh, Actually, we'll uh, get to that, and uh, you're going to give us a very good insight about the same. So, um, you born and uh, grew up back in Kisi County, and uh, uh, you went to school, uh, that is high school, primary school. Which primary school did you go to? I was in St. Mary's Mosocho. That's a primary school? Primary school. Then, and then high school? Maseno School. Maseno School. Uh -huh. Then Maseno University. Right now, I think it's a national school. It was. Maseno. It has been. Come on. Please. It is the... Maseno School. We only have the Nairobi University. <laughs> no. And then, of course, I went uh -huh. to the uh, okay. Maseno University. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may have the University of Nairobi, <laughs> but we also have Maseno University, the only university <laughs> on the equator in the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
Brilliant. So, what did you major in uh, back in campus? I, my bachelor's is in education. Mm -hmm. uh, I studied uh, English and literature. I'm supposed to be a teacher. Wow. I didn't get an opportunity to teach, so I ventured into business. Uh, okay. Up to wow. the year 2018 when mm -hmm. I got this employment, it is uh -huh. not that I stopped doing business, okay. I'm still in business. Back in campus, yes. uh, doing your bachelor uh, of arts in education and, and stuff, um, is that really, was that always your passion was to grow up and become a teacher or that was the course that was available by then? Uh, Why did you choose to go for education? Indeed, that is, it is uh, an unfortunate scenario because mm. uh, I have always wanted to be a lawyer. And most people okay. out here know that uh, I, I am a lawyer okay. uh, because of the kind of engagements I have, the kind of uh, debates I get mm -hmm. involved in. I love uh, law and I read a lot about law, the constitution and all that. Okay. Mm, that is what I had a passion for. Mm -hmm. But uh, our system of education has its challenges that mm -hmm. we have refused to adjust. So I, and uh, you know I've been brought up by a single parent. Okay. And that time uh, the, the available resources were enough to just complement what government was giving me mm -hmm. to actually uh, study education. Mm -hmm. uh, had I wanted to go for a parallel degree in law, I would have had to pay directly. Uh, I wouldn't have been government sponsored and that would have uh, been a major uh, challenge to my mom, mm -hmm. who was the only one uh, taking care of us. Oh, yes. I'm talking about uh, being raised in a family, uh, just a single parent. Um, are you the firstborn? Yes. Last? I'm the firstborn. Um, uh -huh. uh, with the, <laughs> I have two sisters, uh -huh. uh, one called Caro and another one called Sharon. Uh, Caro is my immediate follower. Uh, she has a family and uh, Sharon is still in college. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, being the firstborn, you know, they are most of the time it's not an option to succeed in life you must it's not an option because you said that you you you're actually the pace setter yes so in most of the time uh first bonds and like the last bonds uh you you hardly presented with op with uh, with options uh because you know very well that should you mess up should you not proceed maybe to uh that is a same thing that's going to be emulated by the rest of the siblings um Maybe that explains uh, your very aggressive nature in terms of uh, really uh, in, in talking about your career path, uh, that you've always been doing something throughout. Uh, even before you landed your current job in 2018, mm, uh, maybe a word, uh, even as we proceed. Uh, there are people who are quick to say, you know, me, I come from this family, you know me, my parents are this and that, you know, they don't, they are not able to afford this and that. What can you advise such kind of, uh, especially the young people who are growing up, you know, they have that, uh, they, they want to have that kind of uh, excuse and say, you know, I'm not able to proceed. Uh, there are people who have gone to Form 1 right now. And there are people even dropping out of school at the expense of maybe the, uh, they are feeling for their single parent, for example, like I don't want to expense them so much. So let uh, me stop somewhere, you yeah. know. No. Uh, what I would like to tell people is that uh, the world opportunities are presented to all of us in okay. equal measure, mm -hmm. irrespective of your background, irrespective of uh, whether you had uh, what I can call the regular privileges that uh, rich family sure. uh, kids mm -hmm. uh, actually get. Uh, that is why at my level, I can say I'm one of the most uh, can I, how do I put it? I don't want to call it influential, but mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I am extremely exposed mm -hmm. uh, both in business and in life purely because of I decided to achieve what I'm, I'm, I, I set out to achieve. And this can happen to any young person who decides to pursue their goal. Uh, I, I have read a lot, I have studied a lot, and I've come to realize you think big, but you start small. The biggest problem we have with young people is that they want instant gratification. You want to, if you get into business, you want to succeed in The microwave and success. Su microwave mm. success. You That's don't right. want to start small. You don't want to build up. You don't want to do the building blocks. 
you want to get into music, succeed immediately. You want to start a business, succeed, succeed immediately. You want to finish school, get a job immediately. Absolutely. And that is not how society works. And again, uh, success is not attached to education. Uh -huh. Education is purely to expose. Kindly, can you make us understand what you... Education, uh, success Does is not, not directly attached yeah. to the number of... Uh, the, 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 the purpose you have right now, there is no guarantee, not guarantee you anything. A, a, a success. Success. Uh -huh. Yeah. It just gives you exposure mm -hmm. for you to be able to pursue your goals better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Either in jobs as a career or sport or art or entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh -huh. The opportunities that are presented to us are for all of yeah, There is no one mm -hmm. who has a privilege. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you decide to succeed, you will succeed. The only thing is, there are people like myself who take slightly longer. Mm -hmm. uh, like in true, politics, true, true. I haven't mm -hmm. achieved what I wanted sure. to achieve mm -hmm. 10 years ago because mm -hmm. of what I can call prejudice. True, true. Where I come from, people mm -hmm. are saying, this is a son of a single mom, why mm -hmm. should we elect him That's and true, all true. that. Mm -hmm. But this, over time, because I'm very consistent, they no longer talk about it. Now they look at me differently. Okay. Yeah? If it is in business, the problem we have with young people you start selling groundnuts, uh, two, three weeks, you realize you're not doing well, you give up and move to Fair another business. Something else. You start a butchery, mm -hmm. one month you think you, are, you make a few losses mm -hmm. and the, the meat goes bad and all that. Mm -hmm. true, true. You don't realize mm -hmm. businesses don't grow in a flash. True. So you have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah? And the longer you stay in something, the more likely you are going to succeed in that oh, thing. Exactly. So, uh, like I said, I'm a firstborn. So, I, of course, uh, again, uh, growing up uh, in the society that we have been growing up, unlike in the West, where mm -hmm. people are more intentional in mentoring their, their upcoming uh, generations, yeah, true, true. Uh, where I come from, people usually allow you to live your life. Yeah? So, I have made enormous mistakes, uh, both in business and in politics. I would have been much... Uh, more advanced in politics and even in business had I gotten mentors who are willing to true, actually true. walk the journey with me. Wow, you yes. mentioned, you've, uh, you've uh, mentioned something that I, I value so much, uh, mentorship, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, that you go even to university, you even don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, talking about mentorship, uh, uh, in all those peers of, of life and all that, how do you uh, do you have someone in, in your life maybe who, uh, who was there even to, sh to, to, to hold your hand in terms of really advising and doing this kind of stuff? Anybody? Uh, I still give credit to my mom. Okay. Uh, my mom tried to mentor me. But again, she was a, 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 an employee who, did, mm -hmm. who had not experienced the world of business. Okay. And in my family, no one had done politics before. Okay. Uh, so again, on that, I had my uncle. Uh, who is my mom's brother, mm -hmm. last born, who tried again to also try and mentor me. Mm -hmm. uh, the two are the people who played a major role. But a bulk of what I have experienced and learned and been, insp been inspired with or motivated mm -hmm. by came from my own initiative of mm -hmm. studying people who've mm -hmm. gone before me, studying uh, models that have worked before, and mm -hmm. I get inspiration from people who come from not the obvious that they'll succeed, yeah? Mm -hmm. Both like Obama is mm -hmm. a major inspiration to me. Okay. Uh, even people like Isaac Mwaura are major inspiration to yeah. me. Uh -huh. uh, someone like who is younger than me, uh, mm -hmm. Silvano Sosoro, a member of parliament from uh, South Mugirango, an orphan mm -hmm. street child who True. rose to become a member of parliament. Absolutely. You know, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who inspire me. I also get a lot of inspiration uh, from sports on matters to do with loyalty. Mm -hmm. Uh, like uh, someone like Lebron uh, James, he's a son of a single mom uh, who has been pursuing success. When he doesn't succeed in one area, he moves to the next, uh, from one club to the next. And again, of course, uh, when I talk about Lebron James and how he has succeeded in, 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 in sport, I also like that he's been a family man. He, the girlfriend he had in high school, is the, is the person he has right now as a wife because, mm -hmm. again, some people achieve success and then they mess up because True. they've achieved a lot of fame. I also, inspiration I get again from uh, the late uh, Kobe Bryant about uh -huh. loyalty. Mm -hmm. 
sticking to one club and going all the way and even Messi up to the point that mm -hmm. he has been dropped by his club so and that these people were not necessarily uh, viewed as the people who are going to be the best in their areas. Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. So uh, I, a bulk of what I have learned, uh, I have uh, gotten, is not through uh, absolute mentorship that mm -hmm. is direct. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have literally been pushing myself to read books. I read a lot. Okay. To read models, to study individuals, and that is what has kept me going. Wow. Yes. Uh, to my viewers, this uh, is Ambassador Mari's show, and uh, as you can as we're getting these uh, uh, very, uh, very good uh, uh, the, the, the tips from one of the uh, top and most of the working youth that I know in the country, one person that I've known, uh, one senior leader, uh, when you talk about the youth of this country, uh, very working, you've learned, you've heard uh, that it didn't come from those families, the, those families that we know but is a self-made, that is the word, but alongside uh, is uh, what he's doing, there are people that he has been looking uh, up to and, and all that. Um, talking, about, uh, uh, talking about the current situation in, in Kenya, um, we, we look at uh, the very many graduates, every single year there are graduations, even with this COVID and stuff, even people are graduating online right now. Um, uh, it's true that uh, you've just said that education is an, the ultimate equalizer, that with that, and by the way, uh, we talk about education, and uh, we, uh, he has said clearly that he's not attached, he's not a direct uh, that's a ticket that you are. You're going to succeed. Don't forget that he's a graduate. <laughs> I'm also a graduate, so we advocate for people to do what? Uh, what are those school what, as yeah, well? Yeah, you must go to school. Yes, please. Yeah, going to school mm. is ultimate. It gives but you a good platform. Education for, yep. is the ultimate key uh -huh. to freedom. Exactly. Yes, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, when uh, you, you, when mm. the people who succeed in various fields uh -huh. and they they did not go to school are very few. True. But those the majority who succeed in those fields True. are people who've gone to school. Absolutely. Yeah. So yes. education for me is key. Nobody mm -hmm. should lie to you that don't go to school, you'll mm -hmm. even uh, Bill Gates mm -hmm. dropped out of college <laughs> and all that. That uh, is one in a million. Absolutely. The, and it happens in mm -hmm. countries that have enormous mm -hmm. opportunities, yeah. like the land of opportunities, which mm -hmm. is the U.S. The, the, the US. Uh, now, we have uh, close to 500,000 people mm -hmm. who, get, who graduate from universities, mm -hmm. TVETs, mm -hmm. and other colleges every year into yes. the job market. And most of them, you know, they, they're always very quick to say, you know, we have no capital to start business, you know, we have no, uh, there are no jobs there Those, and there and all uh, that. I, when I say the truth, uh -huh. they call it uh, that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. The things you've just said are called excuses. Uh -huh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because people want sophistication. People don't mm -hmm. want to start small. Uh -huh. Yeah? People want to start big. That is why they talk about capital. Capital mm. is the, even the idea, uh -huh. and there is that, they, that, that is capital in mm. the first place. And then there is capital that is the financial aspect, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes we overestimate the capital we need to start with. You can start mm -hmm. with 5,000, mm -hmm. move to 10, mm -hmm. it will grow to 100, mm -hmm. and capital can start, you get from a friend or family or mm -hmm. parents, and mm -hmm. then once you get you you make your profits you pay mm -hmm. back you can get from banks mm -hmm. you can get from uh, government yes but now again uh, through this office of the deputy president mm -hmm. we came up with an idea of young people if you want to get into business whether you're going to get into business or you're going to get employed i want to encourage everyone to have one or at least more than one stream of income income yeah mm -hmm. whether you're employed you must have a business on the side. Uh -huh. And if you have a business, try and have another business on the side. Mm -hmm. yeah? they, they, we call them side hustles. Yeah. Yeah? So uh, what we are trying to do is to build a saving culture mm -hmm. so that we get out of being taken advantage of by the likes of, by mainstream banks and the likes of Tala and mm -hmm. all these uh, mm -hmm. that the digital, uh, digital uh, lending lenders. that are... Mm -hmm are extorting, mm -hmm. that are predatory, they are taking advantage of our young people. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So capital is built. Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting to finish school and say, now I want to start business, mm -hmm. where do I get capital from? Mm -hmm. yeah? So yep. we are saying, build your capital by saving. True. 
there is something mm. called mwanafunzi credit that we'll uh -huh. talk uh, yeah. about uh -huh. at a later stage, uh -huh. Uh -huh. at a later date with you. Mm. Sure, sure. Uh, mwanafunzi credit is whereby you start saving, when you get into college or high school, you start saving on a monthly basis, yeah, or mm -hmm. on a semester basis or a termly basis, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the study period, mm -hmm. you can go uh, and borrow or get your savings or borrow against your savings because you've built a culture and use that money to start a business, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. It is not that you'll save money on the final year of, of your education and mm -hmm. then go and borrow. Mm -hmm. It has to, you have to demonstrate a culture, sure. yeah? Mm -hmm. It is called Monafunzi credit. That amount will help you start business, uh -huh. yeah? Uh -huh. And as for jobs, my friend, government has no jobs. Mm -hmm. There are no job opportunities. I'm being very sincere. Uh -huh. It is not that because I have a job, yes. then I should talk like this, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And even my job is a contract that is expiring mm -hmm. in a few months. Okay. All I'm saying, there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. Everyone is going digital. We are reducing on the number of humans who are working for us, whether it is in government, mm -hmm. whether it is in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So opportunities will be developed by people who want to transform the world, people who want to bring change, people who want to bring convenience. Okay. Those are the people that will uh, bring jobs. Absolutely. And jobs are not the traditional jobs we have been looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Jobs have transformed. And now we say we are working from home. And that is why it is the entrepreneurs that are going to create jobs. Those are the people that are going to bring opportunities. Sure. And entrepreneurs vary from the person who is doing uh, uh, groundnuts mm -hmm. to that person who is selling burgers mm -hmm. to that person who is in the film industry to that person like you are in film, this is film, true, true, true. to that person who is in, uh, in the mm -hmm. fashion industry, mm -hmm. to that person who is doing carpentry, true, true. to that person who is doing uh, welding, to that person who is doing uh, masonry, mm -hmm. and all these come from people who have learned in TVETs. Okay. TVETs or technical training colleges will be able to churn out people who have skills for the market that true, true. are ready. Wow. Now, if mm -hmm. you are a TVET and your work is to do joinery, mm -hmm and uh, what I can call welding. You will need an accountant to Absolutely. help you manage your books. Probably you, you've studied at a Tivet uh, institution. Uh -huh. And once you study at a Tivet institution, you don't get a degree. Mm -hmm. But you'll get accountants who have degrees. Absolutely. Yeah? Yep. You'll have marketers who have degrees. Uh -huh. yeah? You'll yes. get, uh, you'll need plumbers for your institution. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, yeah. So opportunities will mm -hmm. come from skill-based education uh-huh yeah yeah that is one you you what you're bringing out there has been a paradigm shift over There's the years shift. there is we are not at where we used to be yes. years back yeah and we need to and agree we need to parents. come into reality yes that the, things have changed things have changed talking about digital uh Banaki Bagendi, talking about the digital and all that platform and, and that stuff we the COVID-19 crisis has reminded us that uh, really jobs that we used to value so much, things that used to, to work, uh, that there are many, many, many things that which have disappeared in that we, we, of course, nobody ever thought that at some point a restaurant can be closed down, that we no longer go sit in a restaurant and eat. Right now, you know what is happening. And uh, um, as discussing with some of my friends and they're telling me that we may not revert back to exactly where we were before Absolutely. COVID. Absolutely. You agree with that? I totally agree. Uh -huh. A few businesses will go back, but a majority will adjust. And uh, now we talk about digital. I uh -huh. order my food online. It is dropped. Opportunities have been, again, provided elsewhere yes. mm -hmm. through riders true, true. and logistics. Absolutely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Those are opportunities that have been. So we must learn to adjust, to keep changing, to keep wow. changing, to keep mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an, an example. Please do. There's a footballer called Lionel Messi. The Argentine. The Argentine. Mm -hmm. the, I, he's the best footballer in the world. Absolutely. He was playing for Barcelona. Yes. And everyone was comfortable. We have the best player. We will always be among the, the top. The magician. We will be, <laughs> we'll be among the best. Yes, Do yes. you know they got a shocker the other day mm -hmm. that he, ha he must leave because they cannot afford to pay him. At, the laws in Spain and UEFA laws mm -hmm. cannot allow mm -hmm. Barcelona to keep him. Mm -hmm. For them to keep him, they must ship away almost mm. 10, 15 players. Players, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was easier for him to... to get rid of him as to, an individual. Yes. Uh -huh. But it was a very difficult Absolutely. situation, for, mm -hmm. both for the club mm -hmm. yep. 
and for for uh, himself and then for the because fans he has affected the, the economy mm -hmm. of spain mm -hmm. he has affected the economy of that club uh -huh. uh, where mm -hmm. he was moving to is where he has destabilized <laughs> them uh -huh. what we call a disruption uh -huh. he moved to france yes first france has never experienced that kind of celebrity mm -hmm. coming to a, a uh, to the airport true mm -hmm. they were overwhelmed absolutely yeah mm -hmm. and then the club that is PSG, the, the year they sold the highest number of regalia, t-shirts, mm -hmm. the jerseys, yeah. uh -huh. water bottles, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. was in the year when mm -hmm. Neymar moved to PSG yeah, from, from Barcelona. Barcelona yes. mm -hmm. They sold 10,000 t-shirts, and then that year they sold 266,000 mm -hmm. items. That is the scarf, the mm -hmm. t-shirts, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So here, they think they are ready for this guy's coming. Mm -hmm. The guy moved. <laughs> when he was taking the flight from mm -hmm. Spain, from Spain, yeah. it's a two-hour flight, mm -hmm. 100,000 t-shirts, mm -hmm. gone. Yeah? <laughs> uh -huh. Now they add mm -hmm. stock. Uh -huh. They think, uh, we'll sell up to 250,000. Mm -hmm. Now they tell guys, wait, 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 we organize ourselves. Uh -huh. Now they stock. They have 250,000. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? They go in one hour. Mm -hmm. And they are trying to sell them at night, between 10 and 11 p.m. Uh -huh. They've la run out of stock. <laughs> now they are saying, mm -hmm. now pay, and then we'll drop. Mm -hmm. They have an order of 850,000 t-shirts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, yes. we need to be prepared for opportunities even if we don't get the opportunities. Wow. Yeah? Instead of... An opportunity arriving. Arriving, <laughs> and it, you, you are not ready uh -huh. for that opportunity. Uh -huh. Yeah? That now calls for the skills to we be need acquired. To, yes, we need to have skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I call skill... We need to... The TVET education mm -hmm. is what we need to focus on. Why? Because even if you don't have the jobs here, mm -hmm. there are jobs out there. That's true. You realize the median age in Europe is about 37 years. Mm -hmm. So they are old. True. People in Europe are old. Yeah. In the Asian Tigers, that is Japan, mm. in, in the South Korea, Korea mm -hmm. the, those ones, the, 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 the median age there is in their 40s. Mm -hmm. And then we have what I can call the, 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 uh, the Middle East uh, giants mm -hmm. like Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. like Qatar, yeah, yeah. like UAE, mm -hmm. even in Kuwait. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have very little skilled labor. Yeah? That is again, now we can export the labor to those mm -hmm. countries. Uh -huh. yeah? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that is why we need to give a lot of emphasis yeah. to TVETs. Mm -hmm. And when someone gets out of a TVET institution, they don't necessarily, very few of them will ever Mm -hmm. write a CV. Why? Because theirs is technical. You go to a, a site, Absolutely. someone is building, you tell him to Yeah, to the site and wherever that you, yeah. you showcase what you, you're able to do. Yes. And Me, I'm in plumbing. Yes. You help with putting the piping and all that. Mm -hmm. all, and all that. Yeah. Or electrical, mm -hmm. or you are in masonry, wow. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll ask, but in mm -hmm. the rural areas, which mm -hmm. buildings, everyone is building even in the rural areas. Absolutely. The only difference mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. here you lay the pipes mm -hmm. for how the sewerage system will work. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. village, you will do it for a home. That's true. Right, right. Installing mm -hmm. a tank mm -hmm. and piping. Yeah, yeah. Electrical, mm -hmm. CCTV, everyone is installing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. the opportunities are there around that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you cannot afford education in uh -huh. TVETs, mm -hmm. remember government pays a mm -hmm. bulk of the fee. Mm. You can also learn th through what I can call apprenticeship. Unakuwa mtu wa mkono wa mechanic, in a few months, you're the one who knows how to, move, how mm. to fix mm. that engine. Unakuwa mtu wa mkono wa plumber, in a few months, when you unaenda unanock those doors, na unafungua. But again, you have to professionalize everything. Now, if I talk to a fundi and he does not have a smartphone, mm -hmm. now I don't take them seriously. Mm -hmm. Because I'm in the office. I want to true, tell you, true. send me a photo of what you, the design. I, right. I check it out. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. say change here and there, mm -hmm. send it back. Mm -hmm. You send it back, mm -hmm. I approve. Yep. Make me this bed, mm -hmm. you send a photo, mm -hmm. I've gotten to this stage. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. you are fixing my fridge, you mm -hmm. tell me it is this item that true. is not working. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I call a different fundi, ask mm -hmm. him, is it true this item in a fridge? Mm -hmm. Actually, sometimes mm -hmm. 
inafanyika namna hii mm -hmm. he tells you yes yeah. how much is the cost mm -hmm. you tell me 5k he tells me 2k mm -hmm. i tell you hey i know the price okay so mm -hmm. that is we've gotten to that level uh -huh. yeah? yeah even yeah. if you're going to be a house girl one you must know both languages english and swahili mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because kids nowadays sure. in school mm -hmm. the first language they learn is english sure, sure. yeah and then later they get into swahili mm -hmm. so we are in a world that mm -hmm. needs what i call versatility mm -hmm. it's too dynamic true, true. you must be able to be a carpenter mm -hmm. and a, a, a plumber at the mm -hmm. same time, at the same time yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. you must learn to walk mm -hmm. while you chew absolutely yeah uh -huh. and when i say you must have another mm -hmm. side hustle too mm -hmm. so that you have two three streams of income mm -hmm. it is because again the world has become too expensive for you to be able to take your kids out True. and be able to sort out everything else mm -hmm. you must have another line of income and mm -hmm. that is where i'm telling guys mm -hmm. for employment one you have to think about self employment holy there holy there my viewers i i really want to uh, i hope you're following uh it's getting hot it's getting really exciting over here i told him uh, this channel is going to be about it it's going to be very educative it's going to be uh, inspiring and uh, you can hear the the nitty gritties of uh, the, the, the process of success i always tell my friends that uh, when i meet you when i meet you mr kibagendia uh, you're driving a good car you're living a good life and all that uh, you tell them you're living a good life for example, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining, yeah. most people get excited. Oh, mm -hmm. my friend is driving a good car. I want to understand all that. the journey. The process. Many people want to skip the process. They hardly want to know where you, what you went through to yeah. be where you are. For example, in this office, you don't just, you don't just uh, drop find yourself. Whatever, find in yourself. Yeah, there are processes. And most people don't want to go through that same process. Uh, you've broken down so much, uh, a lot right now. Uh, the, 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 whatever you shared is really uh, massive, especially to someone who is serious who's been following. They have, uh, uh, they have really learned a lot, and uh, I'm glad that you've touched so much about the youth agenda, the youth uh, the, the, as a package, uh, the process and all that. What do they need to, to do to, to at least to be in a position to... Uh, but there's something you've really emphasized, and I took it very seriously. Personally, uh, the thing about uh, the streams of income, how many streams of income do you have as a person? Uh, the fact is, with one, with two, probably you may not be able to fit uh, the bills. Uh, you need more and more, and uh, you've gotten uh, the tips on how best you can get these opportunities. And opportunities don't come calling you. You, uh, you pursue you, them. You pursue them. <laughs> or you get prepared when they pass, you grab them. Yes, and you yeah. cannot grab an opportunity if you are not even trained, prepared, for example. Prepared. Prepared, the preparedness you're talking about, uh, acquiring those skills from the TVETs, from the universities, from here and there. Um, continue watching and also don't forget to subscribe, to like, to comment. Drop your comment right, right down there and tell us something about what you think about our show. Um, allow me to take you straight to politics one-on-one, -on -one, sir. Before we get to politics, yes, please. I wanted to talk <laughs> about unemployment and, and uh, a few things we need to fix to sort it out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. One uh, is entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship varies from actually having capital and looking at the various fields that you can actually uh, make money from. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine is making money, 5,000 shillings per week from selling avocado. He gets avocado from Kisi, brings it to Nairobi, distributes it to Mamambogas uh, around where he lives. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine in this office sells us groundnuts. Mm -hmm. He makes uh, one size, mm -hmm. this size, mm -hmm. he sells it for 100 shillings and half this size, 50 shillings. Okay. Uh, I buy from him every day, uh, the one for 100, two, two mm -hmm. for 200. So I can be sure that I'm going to have some groundnuts. I already it. finished uh, <laughs> when I was having my tea. <laughs> Continue, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, this guy sells the ones for 100, mm -hmm. he sells 100 pieces, makes 30 shillings from each. Uh -huh. The ones for 50, he, send, he sells 200 pieces, he uh -huh. makes 20 bob from each. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. 200 times 30. Mm. That is 6,000? No. 200? Times 30. Yeah, that, that's uh, 6,000. Mm -hmm. No, 200 uh -huh. times 100 uh -huh. is uh -huh. 4,000. 200 times? He sa this one's for 100. Oh, bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sells 100 pieces okay. Okay. times 30 bob. That will be 3,000. 3, and then there are these ones that he sells 200 
pieces, mm -hmm. and he makes 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. That is 4,000. 4,000, yes. In a day, he sells, he makes 7,000 shillings. Wow. Times 40 days in a month, because the, you the, don't have the two days over the weekends. Mm -hmm. So times 40 days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's 140,000 shillings okay. per okay. month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy, I told him to get into that business when he came here to cry that he doesn't have a job. Okay. There's another guy who sells boiled eggs. He has employed so many people. They sell eggs in every stage, Matatu uh, Terminal, mm -hmm. Pipeline, mm -hmm. uh, Don Home, mm -hmm. That Route, yeah. Mbakasi. Mm -hmm. He sells 5,000 eggs in a day, mm -hmm. boiled eggs wow. in different neighborhoods, in uh -huh. garages, in mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. 5,000 eggs mm -hmm. from each egg, he mm -hmm. makes five bob, mm -hmm. 25,000 shillings. Wow. I'm talking about businesses that people don't think about. Right mm -hmm. now I sell meat. Mm -hmm. I sell, I have a butchery. Wow. I sell meat mm -hmm. and from each kilo mm -hmm. you make an average of between 80 mm -hmm. and 100 shillings. If you sell 40 kilos in a day, you have 4,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You sell 100 kilos in a day, you have 10,000 wow. shillings. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. it is how mm -hmm. aggressive you are in marketing mm -hmm. and it has just started. So we are allowing it to follow the process. Mm -hmm. We don't want to rush too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 I'm just giving examples of mm -hmm. businesses that people don't think about. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want to tell people, when I talk about entrepreneurship, you don't have to own this uh, furniture uh -huh. to sell it. You can do something called drop shipping. Mm -hmm. If you have a friend who is selling clothes, mm -hmm. take good photos of those clothes, market them on your WhatsApp uh, status. People secure will ask the for, orders. For, for secure mm -hmm. the orders, mm -hmm. put in your markup, get the clothes, sell to you, wow. make my 200 wow. shillings per cloth. Very you can insightful. also go mm -hmm. to a furniture shop, take photos of their furniture mm -hmm. at Ngong Road where they sell furniture, mm -hmm. market them or in Utawala where you live mm -hmm. there are a lot of furniture shops. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take photos of those furniture, mm -hmm. put them on your WhatsApp status mm -hmm. or on your Instagram or on your Facebook, market them, get the orders mm -hmm. or take the clients to buy a bed, yeah, or buy a, a, a sofa set, mm -hmm. you know, true, that true. is called mm -hmm. drop shipping. Uh -huh. There's another thing called drop servicing, whereby you are a technician who knows how to install CCTV. Mm -hmm. When I hear a friend talking about CCTV installation, I tell him, hey, I have someone. Mm -hmm. He knows how to install. True, true. He does a quote, you put in a markup, send the quote to this guy, he comes, installs, you get your markup. Wow. Yeah? You wow. have a consultant. Mm -hmm. You hear the, someone who wants some consultancy services on HR. Your friend you, is you, a, you reach yeah. out, mm -hmm. uh, like my wife is a HR consultant. Mm -hmm. She comes, she does the job, mm -hmm. gets your, gives you your commission. True, true. That is another way of doing business. Wow. Yeah? You don't wow. have to open a shop. You don't need to look for goodwill. If People you are talking about uh, rent. You don't or, have to. You, uh, you mm -hmm. get a friend who wants to build. You go look for people who are selling sand, be mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the middle person, mm -hmm. make your commission. Yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. Or bring the fundies, you tell them, I'll pay you 500 shillings per day. Mm -hmm. You come here, you tell him, you pay me 700 shillings per fundi per day. Your you mark up is You mark up. Mm -hmm. You pay the fundies, yeah. you get your commission. You become the former. Wow. It doesn't have to be too hard. But again, despite having these ideas, True. even myself, I'm struggling because mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the businesses I want to do, mm -hmm. capital, yeah. sometimes know-how, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm a millionaire Truth. and hence mm -hmm. I don't struggle mm -hmm. or Truth. I know it all. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to say mm -hmm. these are the opportunities that are available for young people mm -hmm. that can transform the world. Number two, True. in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Agriculture can be the biggest employer. There are people who can become trainers. Mm -hmm. There are people who can become extension mm -hmm. officers. There are people who can be involved in actual production. Wale wanalima, wanava gambuts, and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who can be in this other value chain. You realize right now, a, pot a sack of potatoes is going for 500 shillings in Nyandarwa. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Chips, one plate, is going for 500 shillings. One sack of potatoes can make 100 plates of chips. True, true. Now, you ask yourself, why can't I get a storage facility? So that I buy all this, mm -hmm. ship them, and store them. So that they wait for that period when mm -hmm. the, 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 the prices will the prices go, go up. up yeah. Again, you see, there are people who are doing tomatoes here mm -hmm. in Masinga, some mm -hmm. in Kisi. Mm -hmm. And then there's a season, everyone is producing tomatoes. Mm -hmm. They give them to cows to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah? 
why can't we have someone to quickly buy them at that low price mm -hmm. or have a standard price mm -hmm. that will buy them whether they are many, whether they are few in the market and go and make tengeneza tomato paste. Wow. You get? So mm -hmm. we have a lot of opportunities that even some of us we are talking about that we, <coughs> we are looking at how can I take this opportunity mm -hmm. up but we don't grab them. Mm -hmm. I'm mentioning this so that the viewers Just will be able to, uh -huh. to look mm -hmm. at the opportunities around them mm -hmm. and how they can actually exploit those opportunities. Talking about opportunities and uh, wow, uh, I feel like I'm in class. <laughs> <laughs> trust, uh, I really trust and believe that the, the viewer is also learning because we are, we are really compressing a lot of stuff in one uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. show. Mm. And, uh, probably with time you're going to have more and more conversations because we need to really, we, we have to fix this country. We have to fix We have to fix there. this country. And nobody's and going to do it. This country on, is not just about behalf. politics. Yes. It's even about our own discipline. Absolutely. We have to get out of drugs. We mm -hmm. have to get out of depression, uh -huh. mental health issues, and this has to be intentional from government, from ourselves, and uh, from even uh, parliament, uh -huh. you know, uh, we have to fix this country indeed. And even on matters to do with regulations, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing here, yeah. uh, this mm -hmm. is filming, yes, sir. if you were to go the right way, do you know you are supposed to get a license from KEBS, a license, from Kenya Film Commission, you're shouting. A license yes. from <laughs> KFCB. You must be a registered business, Absolutely. and all that. That that uh, yeah? process, yes. Those that, that are is called the, uh, inhibitors. They are stopping growth. Uh, true. That yeah? is true. Mm -hmm. They are stopping growth, and we must be able mm -hmm. to fix this country by saying these regulations are oh. traditional. Can we have a one-stop shop? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. really we must be able to provide opportunities for mm. our people. Mm. Yeah? And when I talk about opportunities, yes. sports is an industry. Sports, sports, please. Can, we, can you say something about sports? We, and, uh, must, we must fix this. We are trending right now. Yeah. We are trending all over the world. Uh, when uh, Kipchoge Eliud lands in London, the, he's, the, a the, he's, he's, he's a, a serious celebrity. Everything goes on stand. I mean, Stand still, and everyone is looking and trying to capture Kipchoge. I mean, uh, Eliud Kipchoge and, and all the athletes, the likes of Kipi are gone. Uh, Kenya is, is actually uh, like when I was, uh, I, was, uh, I was living abroad in Pakistan. The, every person sees you, and they when they ask you, Hey, how are you? What's your Where name? Where are you from? Kenya. Oh, oh, Eliud Kipchoge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Immediately they attach you to those kind of names, and uh, we are big. Actually, they know every every Kenyan is a runner. Wonderful. And, uh, he's a professional athlete, and uh, uh, really, yeah. say something about it, please. Uh, because of time, I'll just gloss over it. Please do. Uh, sports is a big industry in the West. That's Europe. The U.S., mm -hmm. in South America, South in South Africa, in sure. North Africa. Mm -hmm. It's a big employer. Mm -hmm. Various disciplines, from football, athletics, swimming, mm -hmm. everything that you saw at the Olympics, all those are big employers. All mm -hmm. we need to do is to fix infrastructure for those things, fix matters to do with administration from government side, administration from the federa federation level, identify talent, grow the talent, and market the talent out there. Just imagine if we had 10 Kipchoges uh -huh. in that field, have 100 Wanyamas playing football, earning 20 million shillings a month. Uh -huh. If we had this lady called Washu, were playing volleyball, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. If we had so many of those, those people, if the president calls them and tells them, "You five thousand of you who are pros in your failure, various fields, I would want you to help me build an equivalent of Kenyatta National Hospital." Those five thousand people will uh -huh. each give you one million shillings. You'll have five mm -hmm. billion shillings to build Kenyatta National. So Hospital. indirectly, you 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 get into a point where you. I mean, uh, the, like you are addressing actually the loans we uh, we find ourselves in yes. right now. They are One, necessary. We may not need to borrow. Mm -hmm. They are savings. Let me tell True. you: mm -hmm. if you go to Eldoret, you want to sleep in a an hotel for one thousand five hundred shillings. Mm -hmm. You'll get an a very good hotel. That is very true. I can yes? to that. I've been there. Or Nakuru, true. because most true. of these athletes invest in Nakuru mm -hmm. and Eldoret. True, true. If you go to Kisi, a hotel for one thousand five hundred 
is Ashanti. <laughs> Yeah? Una shout. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm trying to say is this. Uh -huh. If we invest in sports, yeah? Yes. We'll have so many of these athletes investing back home, putting up these hotels and uh, stadia and facilities and stuff like that. But we must first, as government, invest. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Develop a culture so that everyone would mm -hmm. want to be a, a, an Eliud Kipchoge or Achoo. Awanyama or Achoo. Washu mm -hmm. or whoever else Absolutely. is thriving in that mm -hmm. trade. Mm -hmm. It can be a big employer. Mm -hmm. If football can employ 5,000 people, yeah, look at their dependence. Uh -huh. If athletic can employ 10,000 people, look at their dependence. Mm -hmm. If volleyball can employ 5,000 people, mm -hmm. look at their dependence. And it is about investment. Number two, that is when money goes to the pocket. Number mm -hmm. two, government will earn from taxation. True. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Government will earn from taxation. Number three, if you invest in facilities, Rwanda invested in some arena where they are hosting uh, uh, basketball for Africa, volleyball for Africa. Mm -hmm. You can imagine how much money that country is making mm -hmm. from hosting those, those events. True. We can hardly host... Africa Cup of Nations, because we don't have the facilities. Facilities, yes. We need those investments that will create jobs for people. And when you build a good stadium, you'll have a groundsman, you'll have people wiping those seats, you'll have people mm. selling sausages and uh, True. Uh, mm. mutura outside uh, the stadium, yeah. and people will be making money somehow. Mm. What I call the ripple effect mm. of aggressive investment. True, true. On matters to do with film, mm -hmm. Nigeria has a direct employment of five million people in the film industry. The, the, the movies we watch here are for international markets, Africa. Mm -hmm. They have movies that are for Kakamega, that are understandable in Western Kenya. Or movies for Kisi. in their local dialects. dialects uh -huh. You know? Uh -huh. And then there are movies now mm -hmm. for the region. And then there are movies for their national. And then mm -hmm. there are movies that actually for go the out. global community. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Yeah, yeah. You can imagine how many people are employed. And when during shooting of a movie, people move from location to location, they eat, they are transported, they have to buy uh, mm -hmm. regalia or mm -hmm. costumes. So, mm -hmm. You know, so it has a ripple effect. Wow. Yeah? So the creative industry can also become a big deal. Mm -hmm. Look at Diamond. Uh, Diamond. The Diamond from Tanzania. Yes. Uh -huh. in, in Tanzania, Diamond has a whole crew like what you have here. Uh -huh. He has cameramen who do videography and those who are taking photos. He has a manager. He has someone who is working on his fitness. He has all those people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They are employed because he's a star that is earning from entertainment. Yeah? So, really, if we invest in what I can call the creative industry, film, music, mm -hmm. poetry, art, we'll be able to employ a lot of people. These are things that we keep ignoring. And I hope I can say this repeatedly sure. so that people can get to understand. And uh, like I told you, I work for the deputy president. I work for government yes. in the office of the deputy president. And these are things he's taking very seriously. And I know <coughs> uh, when he becomes president, a lot of these things, because we will be with him and we'll be checking him and we'll be pushing him, mm -hmm. a lot of these things will come to fall, will, come, will actually happen. And you said mm. we move on to politics. Po Thank you so much. Because of time. Yeah. yeah, because of, uh, I, just for the viewers, uh, this is Ambassador Omari show, and we are live, uh, streaming live with my friend here, a uh, very uh, reputable uh, gentleman, uh, uh, an employee uh, of the government, and uh, and he doesn't just work in any office, he's working with the deputy president's office, and that is where uh, we are we are having this conversation right now. We have covered a lot, and I believe you uh, you really getting value for your time, and uh, you've really been very consistent in uh, uh, saying you know investment need to be done here and there and there, so that we can be able to have these kind of things attractive to the youth. For example, already skilled to come and do the athletes, come and do the uh, this kind of sports because the people already there they are well appreciated. 
the likes of Kipchoge and all that. And just a one word, what do you take off what has happened to the athletes who have just returned back home? Do you, do you anything okay, you can was, say about it? It was uh, disturbing. Uh, yes. Uh, it wasn't exactly. Especially at looking all. at our neighbors. Uh, if you look at what <laughs> Uganda has done to their athletes versus what we have done, it is unfortunate. I know government, uh, I'm in government, but we will rush to do it too late in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to start appreciating uh, our athletes, our mm -hmm. sportsmen. You yeah. know, Kenya, the mm -hmm. people who've marketed Kenya the most are not our, our ambassadors. Absolutely. They are our sportsmen from True. the rugby team to our I athletes agree with you. who, who trot the, the globe. Mm -hmm. So we need to do better, and mm -hmm. I believe we will be doing better in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we say it's a learning experience. True. But again, how many times do we learn? We mess up, we do it, we forget, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So we must be consistent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. the people that are responsible need to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Thank you so much about all that. And we actually coming to the very close of our show. And uh, like I said, allow me just to insist on this because we are out of time. <laughs> uh, the politics, uh, really, said everything is attached to politics and everything because uh, of the <coughs> obvious reasons that we are uh, having that poli really uh, political will and everything, uh, being a president, uh, running the government and all that. You know, most of these things you've, uh, you've really listed can be can be implemented, achieved. can be achieved, uh, provided you have the, the, the powers to do ABCD. Uh, talking about uh, right now, we're in 2021. I, this is, uh, we are in an uh, election mood already. Well, you as uh, Mr. Anthony Kibagendi, um, any political ambitions? Because yes. I know for, for sure, uh, and I know most of the viewers already know that you are, you are in the political scene. You've been there before. Yes. Uh, what plan do you have uh, going into 2022? Yeah, I'm running for political seat. Yes. I'm running for, as a member of parliament uh -huh. uh, for Kitutu Church South. Uh, that's Kitutu in Kisi County. Church South. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. That will not be the end. But running for MP is not my dream. Mm -hmm. My dreams are bigger than that. But that is the path to where I want to go. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, like you said, politics uh, actually determines mm -hmm. even the salaries you earn, mm -hmm. uh, even in the private sector, mm -hmm. the taxes you pay, mm -hmm. the kind of education system you have, mm -hmm. the kind of health system that you have, mm -hmm. the kind of stadiums that you have, the kind of entertainment that you'll have, mm -hmm. the kind of curfews you'll experience, <laughs> and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So, you must get involved. Mm -hmm. And getting involved in politics does not that mean you must go for an elective seat. Uh -huh. It is about participating and identifying the right leaders and supporting them. Supporting politicians is not just about the vote, mm -hmm. even putting in your money. That is why Obama mm -hmm. became president. People put in money totally. for him to transform, mm -hmm. the th mm -hmm. to pick on the things that mm -hmm. they thought he ought to have pushed for them. Uh -huh. So we need to get in involved in politics mm -hmm. from the aspect mm -hmm. of uh, interrogating policies mm -hmm. and the people pushing them. Yeah. From the that is their manifesto and what have you, mm -hmm. from character, yeah, to actual support where you vote for them, mm -hmm. to actual support in terms of uh, mm -hmm. what I can call uh, support financial mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. personnel or various other kind of support that come in and actual voting, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we must get involved. Yeah. And that has to happen from the level of MCA all the way to the president. The president. And you must mm -hmm. look for your interests. Who is talking about the issues that affect you? Yes. Not just euphoria. Who is actually mentioning? I like the way my boss is doing. Now he's talking about revival of the economy. Mm -hmm. And he's going regional. He's going to Nyanza and asking them, what are the things that used to make this place vibrant? What are the things that used to make this place we, you know, we put in money? And... People are coming up with ideas of how they want the economy to be revived. Right. Yeah? And that is the way we need to go. Yeah? Yes. Politics of issues. Mm -hmm. Politics of transformation. Yeah. Many times uh, we've been told uh, that uh, uh, the time for the youth is coming. Uh, is tomorrow and all that. And uh, we realized that tomorrow is already here. We are living the tomorrow that we've always been the told. The future is here. The future is here. So there's no more waiting. There's yeah. no more sitting back and watching. And Get everything. involved. By the way, I'm no longer a young person. I'm, uh, I'm turning 40. Wow. Uh, next year. Okay. So well, I'll be invited to <laughs> that. So and that I'm, is where life starts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, say, they so. say that. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So what I'm saying, it is high time we run for political seats as mm -hmm. young people. Yeah. 
it is high time we get involved in policy. Mm -hmm. It is high time you bring your ideas to government on areas you want transformed. And that is how you get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. And uh, uh, young people don't have to run the entire government. Yeah? Support those who are already in it, mm -hmm. push them, support them, and ensure they become. Yeah? There are very many seats to be, to, mm -hmm. to, to be filled mm -hmm. from MCA, mm -hmm. MP, women rep, senator, governor, up to president. Mm -hmm. And then after that, government has to be formed. We have from mm -hmm. the under secretaries, mm -hmm. uh, secretaries like myself, directors in mm -hmm. various government ministries and departments, mini PSAs and ministers. We have ambassadors. We have all these. Mm -hmm. Opportunities are unlimited. So get involved. You cannot be get to this office if you sit in the house. True. You I can't. With you. You I can't. got here because I ran for office and I was advocating for youth. You were out there and people Pushing. could observe and see what yeah. you can be able to I do. Could, that is how I got That's identified. Right. So we have to push ourselves. Uh -huh. We have to work hard. You can't sit in your, what I can call, comfort zone and expect to be identified. You have to come out, run, get elected or run you lose, but people will understand this guy is good in women issues, this lady. They'll push you to the either the Commission for Gender or matters to do with women here and there, or he, this guy is good in youth issues, Ministry of Youth, or here as an advisor on youth affairs. This guy is good in matters to do with mining, mm -hmm. Ministry of Mining. True. This guy is an advocate of matters to do with agriculture. Mm -hmm. There are advisory roles there. You know, mm -hmm. get out, shout out, mm -hmm. you will get known. You will get noticed, you'll get elected. If not elected, you'll get noticed and you'll get into policy and various other departments. Last but not least, uh, looking at the, that camera, I'm yes. talking to the electorates of the very beautiful constituents of uh, Kitutu Church South. And uh, they are watching. What can you tell them? What should they expect from you? And uh, as you go down, as, as you uh, tender your uh, application for the same office, uh, what can you tell them? What uh, do you YouTube, like YouTube, to offer? YouTube is not for Kitutu Church South mm. alone. <laughs> it is for the whole nation. Absolutely. Uh, so Sorry. what I would like to say, to tell young people of this country, yeah. mm -hmm. you need to be prepared for opportunities and grab every opportunity that comes your way. Mm -hmm. We need to stop whining and complaining and start providing solutions. Wow. As young people, we want to be the trendsetters. Just pause there. We need to stop. To start doing what? Providing stop. solutions. Stop. Whining. Uh -huh. And complaining. And complaining. We need to be the problem solvers. Not, the, not part of the... We <laughs> don't need to be part of the problem. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And prob uh, wow. so we need to provide solutions. Solutions. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. In every field... Yeah, mm -hmm. and be ready for opportunities. I tell young people, think big, start small, start now. And if you have disciplined effort in whatever you do, you will definitely, definitely succeed. You don't have to do leaps. Even small steps towards your goal mm -hmm. is progress. And hence, I encourage young people to think outside the box and to support ideas that are transform transformative. transformative yeah. We live in an extremely dynamic world, a world that is changing too fast. Let us learn to be able to adjust with the world as it comes. Wow. We have opportunities, mm -hmm. even some that some of us admire, we have not grabbed them. And my friend, never rely on one stream of income. Wow. Have a side hustle or two and that is how you'll be able to live the kind of life that you want. All Before that, how many streams of income do you have? As uh, we come to the very close of this show, um, really, even before you make that very, very uh, final remark, and uh, you, 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 you really, uh, I must be very grateful. I must say thank you so much for creating this time. And, uh, really giving us a serious insight about everything matters to do with everything actually you've touched on almost everything but going forward we'll uh, we'll address more we will uh, we request for more of your time so that we can uh, help us understand more uh, going forward um, I, i've learned a lot hopefully you've done the same just sign out please if you can <laughs> i signed out earlier but again I you do it truly truly that appreciate very punchline uh, opportunities yes. 
uh, to speak to young people, especially young people of uh, this country and young people of my constituency, mm -hmm. and also to just inspire uh, my generation. And I say thank you, uh, thank you to the viewers, and uh, may God bless you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.